Hello and welcome to Sound Librarian. I'm Stefan Schutz. Today we're going to have a look at a game that is very significant to me personally. It's a game that was on the Sega Mega Drive, uh, or Sega Genesis, depending on which territory you're in. And it's a game that is probably not widely known. I don't think it was a hugely uh, popular game, but it was a game that's very, very interesting for quite a few reasons. Personally, it has one of my favourite pieces of music ever written in any game ever. And this piece of music is about four bars long. It's really, really hard for me to explain why this music is so significant to me. The reason why uh, The Immortal as a game is significant is because I believe that it's one of the earliest games that was very, very heavily scored. And what I mean by that is that it didn't just have a couple of pieces of music, one for sort of exploring and one for combat, which is uh, quite a common way of, of doing game music. The Immortal had music that underscored so many elements of what was going on. There would be introductory story elements that would have their own little musical section. There would be combat sections that have their own little musical section. There were different pieces of music for different room environments and for different events that were happening. Now for a game that was running on a platform that was that old and had the limitations of the Sega Genesis, this was really quite remarkable. But it wasn't just the number of different tunes, they were incredibly atmospheric. And the particular one that I enjoy the most is in a room that is essentially an empty room. And yet it adds so much atmosphere to this room that it has stuck with me for, for 20 years. So we're gonna have a look at The Immortal and I'll try and see if I can convey to you why some of these elements of music and the sound design as well were so significant to me and why I think this game really, really is worthy of a position in the 101 video games you must listen to. Let's get started. So as you can see already from this short period of time that I've played the game, there are already multiple themes that have come in. We've got the obviously the uh, attack theme that we're hearing now, but we've had a theme for the environment, this first environment in which you are walking around. We've had a theme for when you get the first bit of story information right at the beginning. We've had another short theme for when you are going through and checking equipment and, I guess, looting bodies, etc. So, really, there is quite a lot of musical content in this game. Not a theme for when you're dying, it appears. Uh, you reset and come back in. But there are lots of short musical themes that accompany different aspects of the game. And this is really quite common these days in sort of a, a role-playing type game. But again, for when this game was produced, most games would have perhaps a different theme per level. So you would play through a level for, you know, five minutes and then move on to the next level and then maybe you'd have a new theme. This game is far more tightly scored, as, as I mentioned in the introduction. There's just a lot more going on from the musical point of view. The sound effects are fairly 
typical of this sort of platform, lots of sort of noise sounds, although we do have sort of simulated speech in the combat. And there's quite a large range of sound effects as well. This game is, is very limited from a, uh, a scope point of view. And what I mean by that is that you can't really venture around and explore too much. It's actually quite a small environment. It's a, it's a very narrow and linear uh, experience. You have to do a specific number of things in a specific order to get through the game. Graphically, this game is very advanced. It's, it's like really, really quite remarkable compared with other games of its period. But as you can see, every single sort of new room is a, quite a small environment within which you get to move around and you have to solve the puzzle within each room in a lot of ways. So you also have the ability to use the various different pieces of equipment you have. And in this particular case, I'm going to try and dispatch this enemy with a fireball. Um, saves me having to try and get into combat. Uh, now, one of the issues with this game is that um, it's, quite, it's really quite difficult. The combat is very, very hard. And so to try and get through the game and demonstrate it here, uh, I've used the fireball here, which is probably something that I, I actually have to keep for a, a more important scenario. So we have a new room and another theme. And this is the room that has the theme that I really, really like. Now, I really cannot explain what it is about the music in this room. Um, I don't think this room is actually empty. I think there's a couple of pit traps in there uh, in the uh, right-hand corner. But there's something about this room. There's something about the ambience within the music of this room that has stuck in my head from the years ago. I never actually owned this game. I think I rented it once for a weekend to play. So my entire experience with this game is of only a few hours on a weekend 20 years ago and yet this piece of music has stuck in my head all that time as being something that was significant there is just something about the style and the way it just suits the ambience of this game that regardless of the, the primitive musical sounds that they had available I just find this piece of music just really quite enthralling I guess Another room, another situation, another musical theme. And you can't see there, but I've just fallen down a hole, which I'm failing to get out of. So the game here will reset because I've just fallen down a hole. So here I'm trying to actually sort out a puzzle to be able to advance onto the next level. So the level, the detail of the animation on this game is really quite incredible, uh, again, considering when this game was made. So it's a, I think this is a, a short, linear, highly polished experience, and the sound really, really supports that, that hypothesis, I guess, in that there is a lot of sound going on here from the point of view of lots of different types of pieces of music, and uh, quite a few range of sound effects as well. And so instead of making a really, really big game, with all the memory being sort of spent on the size of the thing, they've made what I think is a small, compact, but highly polished game. As you explore through this game, it really is like some of the more modern role-playing games, but it's just the equivalent of like one section, one dungeon, one adventure within that. And you've got all these different sorts of things that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. 
What's significant to me is that, as I mentioned, I played this game once for a few hours on a weekend 20 years ago. And it stuck with me. It, it, the, the graphics were significant enough that I remembered them. The music was significant enough that I remembered it. That anything that has that much impact on you that you remember for that long, I think is something that re is really worth looking at again to find out exactly what it is that they've done right. So I have no idea whether other people will listen to this, uh, the, the music in this game and think, okay, whatever, or whether it is something that is uh, worthy of the, the notice that I'm giving it. So this is unusual and it's, it's, it's difficult for me to know whether this is just something that's a bit of a nostalgia hit for me or whether there are significant things in that. So I'm hoping that by uh, putting this video out there, people can have a listen to it and judge for themselves exactly how effective you think the sound and the music in The Immortal were. Either way, I hope this has been interesting for you, and thank you very much for watching.